Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, this week's Olivia Aid session. We're still a minute before starting time, so uh, we'll just let people stream in. Feels like we should have some sort of waiting music, hey, Murray? Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, a little bit of, you know, soft music, maybe a little bit jazz with blues, you know, yes. maybe classical, depending on the mood you're in, <laughs> just move nicely into it. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody uh, amongst the very many people who join is, is a good singer or a, oh yeah, a, can play an instrument can, or something like that. Commission somebody to, to serenade us while we wait, that'd be lovely. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's just um, clicked over 8 p.m. my time. Uh, so we'll start. Um, Kathy, while I'm introducing, if you could please um, let people in. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again. Um, it's a pleasure indeed uh, to introduce my colleague, Murray. Uh, my name is Saurabh. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of, uh, of Alleviate along with uh, Ian. Um, whom I fondly refer to as the Sage of the Yarra Valley. Uh, he's an apology, I believe, tonight. Um, so we'll have to make do with in his absence. Um, but Murray is not too far behind um, to, to being the Sage of Brighton, I think. Um, so uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with you, Murray, over the last, um, what is it now, a year and a half? Yeah. Something like that. Um, I think we started, uh, we would have met in between one of those interminable lockdowns. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, um, uh, so Murray's had a, a long career in uh, in corporate, um, in uh, uh, people and culture teams, as they're called now, or human resources, uh, as they might have been called before. Learning and development, I think, has been Murray's um, specialty. And uh, I think, for, um, very fortuitously for the world, he has decided to apply that to uh, to the esoteric world of meditation. Um, and having having uh, successfully introduce meditation into very many large corporates. Um, Mari is now helping us uh, do the same in terms of this alleviate program, the mentoring program and so on. Um, uh, obviously with the specific lens of uh, trying to help people who are, um, you know, with uh, um, some sort of physical or mental health challenge. So with that having said, um, today's practice is, uh, is pain relief um, and Murray, I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, and certainly go through the uh, be led led through the practice with you. So over to you. Thank you very much, Sora. Thank you for that lovely introduction and um, also for your warmth and friendship to to Kathy and Ian. When I was thinking, listening to you describe Ian as the sage of the Yarra Valley, I was thinking of him. I think of him more as the wag of the Yarra Valley because I think he's a bit of a wag, <laughs> and I think I'd be prefer, prefer to be regarded as a bit of a wag than a bit of a sage. I think it's a lot safer to have a sense of humour about your your attributes and uh, and your weaknesses. So uh, don't take yourself too seriously. I think is the message there. But thank you anyway. I'll, I'll, I'm grateful for that. So welcome everybody. Lovely to to be with you again and to speak with you again and then lead you through a, the practice. So the practice tonight is pain relief, as sort of said, and it all comes under the managing pain um, area of the, the app, which you're probably familiar with. And there's a key. I mean, Ian uses these words very carefully and very thoughtfully. It is about managing. Pain. It's not about ignoring pain. It's not about pretending pain doesn't exist. It's not about pretending to be indifferent to pain. It's really to pay deep attention, actually, to your experience. And also, I think, as many meditators would do, to regard meditation as an opportunity for experimentation. So conduct an experiment on yourself and conduct an experiment on your experience of pain. So what is it that I notice? What is it that... I'm able to do and what is it that I'm disabled by when I'm currently experiencing some pain and you know I've, I've thought about this and I've talked about this before in, in different settings and uh, I had a, a visit to a specialist last week you know the routine kind of thing and you in your mind you kind of just oh yep yeah, it's just you know just a thing I'm going through I'm not paying too much attention to it I'm thinking about what I've got to do afterwards I'm thinking about what I have to do beforehand I mean in, in the in the specialist rooms and the conversations going on and i'm going yes la -di -la, -di la that's fine yep 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 all good that's fine and then 
a pause and then a hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, you get that kind of, well, they're sounding curious and interested. And I'm going, oh, that can't be good news from my perspective. And I'm listening to this kind of change of tone and change of patter. And uh, so I had an instant kind of physiological reaction. I'm going, oh, I think I'm going to hear something I wasn't looking forward to hearing or perhaps experience something I wasn't thinking that I would have to experience at this moment. You know, we have this extraordinary ability to, of course, ignore our reality and just kind of presume something else. And then you're faced with it from time to time. So, well, and it's no big deal. It's a minor thing. But I had quite a uh, uh, an obvious uh, psychological and physiological reaction just to simply the, the tone of her language. I noticed that it changed. I go, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to undergo something which is not deeply unpleasant, but it's slightly unpleasant. I'd rather not have that experience. And I felt myself tightening up. And I go, oh, I'm reacting to this. I'm already anticipating some discomfort and some pain, even though I haven't experienced it yet. And I'm thinking, you know, because I couldn't actually see what was happening. I, has it happened yet? Has it happened yet? Has it happened yet? You know, this anticipating this kind of, because we all, of course, or most of us have a, uh, have a real uh, experience with pain and things of discomfort of that sort. So you automatically kind of start to prepare. And I thought about that. I'm going, well, this isn't really helpful. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a meditator and I'm a meditation teacher. I should probably apply myself to this thing and just regard it as an experiment because truly it's an experiment with your mind. It's an opportunity to think about this and attend to it. So it's got, oh, like, it's not helpful that I'm, actually tensing my body up in anticipation because I know from my experience that when I respond that way to pain, the pain is increased or my experience of pain changes. And, and I suspect I'm not unique <laughs> in that response. So we have two reactions to pain. There's the actual pain. I mean, it's a real thing. We experience it. But there's all that anticipating and the kind of awfulizing that goes with the anticipating and the tensing up of the body and the narrowing of the mind and the tightening of everything, yeah, this isn't helpful. So what's a better approach? Well, I could just perhaps concentrate on my breath for a few moments. I could perhaps stop responding politely to the chatter of the specialist because I don't really need to engage in that. I need to focus now. And this is important that I focus. I don't need to be socially agreeable anymore. I need to attend to this. This is an important thing. As I say, a minor thing, really, but important nonetheless. So it's a great lesson for somebody who teaches meditation and who has experienced pain. But, you know, when you're not experiencing it, you can be quite you know, matter of fact about it because you're not experiencing it. So why would you pay that much attention? So anyway, so I tell that little story because I think it just reveals what's beneath this practice and what's the, the purpose behind this guidance. And that is to invite you to engage in a couple of different ways with your experience. So it's not denying that pain exists. So what is it? It's a signal. Our body is signaling to us that this is something you may want to remove yourself from if you're able to. It's just a warning. That's its purpose. The signal of pain is not pain itself. It's just a signal. That's all it is. It's there for a very good reason, so that we can turn away or avoid or withdraw from something which might harm us. So that's its purpose, simply. That's its purpose. But we create quite a different response to it. So the psychological response to pain is kind of more interesting in a way because when you attend to that really quite thoughtfully and with a calm approach, and if you are regularly meditating, it's more likely that you'll be able to move yourself into this position of kind of calm acceptance rather than that tightness and that tendency or or preference to um, wish it away, wish it wasn't happening, awful eyes about it, kind of construct the big story about this experience. So that's what we'll do in the practice. We'll, we'll go through a guided practice that leads us to attend to our experience, but takes us through the experience. So if you're not in pain at the moment, I'm sure you can recall something that will be relevant to you. And in any case, in, in my experience, when you actually start to relax, you notice things about your body that you're not attending to. You actually have discomfort. It might be an old injury. It might be 
uh, some t tiredness or fatigue or damage that you carry and you're not actually consciously paying attention to anymore because it's kind of background. It's not a bad thing that it's background, but it does have a cost, this background uh, discomfort perhaps you may also be experiencing. So even if you don't have a really pre present moment experience of something deeply painful, it'll still enable you to go through a guided practice which may change your orientation to your experience. Yeah? I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> I realize I've been talking for a bit. So that's the invitation in any case, to, to kind of approach it in, in a slightly different way, in an experimental way, not to deny your experience, not to pretend that it doesn't exist, um, but really to approach it and attend in a different way. So that we can perhaps sidestep sort of the negative self-reinforcing cycle that um, uh, anticipation might cause us to, to uh, engage in. So we just go, let's just upset that story. Let's just enter this slowly and carefully and thoughtfully and see what happens. Because it, clearly, if you've managed to do this before, and I'm sure there are many of you who have, but if you haven't, it's an extraordinary thing to be able to place this discomfort in its an appropriate place and to kind of disassociate from the experience or so the, the difficult experience of pain while not denying its existence. That's probably enough palaver. How about we, um, we start our practice? So just... An invitation and, and two if you are actually in deep discomfort you can do this practice lying down of course that's completely fine in which case if you do that just lying uh, flat on your back perhaps a little bit of support under your neck so that your head is in a comfortable position your heart your arms loosely by your sides palms upwards and your feet just a little bit apart just so it's comfortable balanced and so let's begin just taking a few moments to settle your posture. And when you're ready, just let your eyes close gently. Just take a little moment to remind yourself while you're engaging in this pain management exercise. So have a clear intention in your own personal experiment. But then if you can, just let go of any effort or any striving to make something in particular happen. Just remaining curious and observe what happens. And now just relax your body as completely as you can. Just releasing and relaxing naturally. And do it as easily and as deeply as you can. And if you've been meditating regularly, then just aim to recall that feeling of deep relaxation. And now move your attention through the body. Seeking out an area that feels different. An area that is painful or tight or under pressure in some way. And be aware of where the sensation is located in your body. Where is it exactly? Is it in the tummy? Or the back? some part of a leg or arm. So where is it located? And is it 
close to the surface of the skin or is it deeper into the tissues? Where is it exactly? And now be aware of its shape, the shape of this sensation. Does it feel shaped like a ball, a sphere, a rod? What is its shape? And what is its size? How long is it? Be specific. How many centimeters or inches long is it? Is it two? Is it 10? Just how long is it? And how wide is it? Again, how many centimeters or inches wide is it? Is it one, five? How wide is it and how deep is it? How many centimeters or inches deep is it? What is its size? Now be aware of its density. Is it hard like a rock or soft like a sponge? Is it harder on the outside? Harder on the inside? Or the same all the way through? What density does it have? And what is its surface texture like? Is it soft and fuzzy or hard and smooth? What does it feel like? And what temperature is it? Is it warm or cool? or neutral? What temperature is it? And what color is it? If it did have a color, what might that color be? Now hold this area in your attention. And as you breathe in, imagine you're traveling with the breath. Travel with the breath right to that area you are focusing your attention on. And then imagine the breath gently washes around the outside of it. And as you breathe out, the breath just gently ebbs away again. A bit like an ocean wave coming into the shore, 
washing around something in the sand and then just going out to sea again with the out breath. And do that for three more breaths. So each time that you breathe in, the breath comes in, washes around the outside of the area. And then with the out breath, the breath just gently ebbs away again. And now the next time you breathe in, imagine that your breath flows right into the very center of this area. And as you breathe out, the breath just gently ebbs away again. And do that for three more breaths. So breathe in, and the breath goes right into the center of this area. And then with the out breath, it just gently ebbs away again. Good. Now, as you breathe in again, imagine flowing with the breath as it goes to this area once again and washes around the outside of it. And then as you breathe out, the breath gently ebbs away. Do this again for three more breaths. Breathing in, the breath goes around the outside of the area, breathing out, it just gently ebbs away. That's good. Now, just gently scan your attention through your whole body once again. Just noticing if there's a particular sensation that your mind is drawn to. And if there is, you can repeat the whole process again like this. So notice where the sensation is localized, which part of the body, is it close to the surface or deeper into the tissue? Then be aware of what shape it has, round like a ball, oval like an egg, a rod, what particular shape? does it have? And then notice more particularly what size it is. How long is it? How wide? How deep? How many centimeters or inches? What size is it? And then be aware of its density, hard like a rock, soft like a sponge. 
harder on the outside, harder on the inside, or the same all the way through. And then the surface. Notice whether the surface is rough or smooth. What is its surface like? And what temperature is it? Is it warm or cool or neutral? <clears throat> what temperature is it? And color, if it had a color, what color would it be? And now, as you hold your attention on this area, the next time you breathe in, follow the breath in and around the area. The breath washing around the outside. And then with the out breath, gently ebbing away. And do that for three more breaths. And the next time you breathe in, follow the breath right into the very center of the area. Then breathe out, the breath just gently ebbing away once again. And do that for three more breaths. Good. But now you can simply rest with the feeling you have right now. Or you can continue with the exercise and repeat the last sequence once again. But you might like to just let go of the exercise and simply rest with the feeling. Just simply letting go. Going with it. Just simply letting go quite effortlessly. Effortlessly. More and more. Deeper and deeper. Just simply letting go. Letting go. And feeling the ease of it all. The natural ease of it all. Feeling it all through, through the body and the mind, all through, feeling it deeply. Completely, just going with it. Going with it quite 
effortlessly. Effortlessly. Now it might help to take your attention to that point between the eyes, a little into the forehead. And notice there what is like a still, quiet center, a point of stillness. Maybe you notice it more particularly in the space behind the closed eyelids. So just holding your attention now lightly on this point of stillness. It's almost as if you can merge into this stillness. Relaxing, releasing, merging, dissolving. Maybe even a sense of expanding into the stillness, just simply letting go quite effortlessly. Effortlessly. Letting go. Letting go. And now, just resting in that stillness for a few moments.
That's good. Good. So when you're ready now, and just let your eyes gently open again. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Marie. Um, time froze for me a little bit. <laughs> I thought uh, that was a very long 40 minutes. <laughs> well, sure. I'll miss it, yeah. Wonderful. That's a, it's a, it's nice to, nice to have time expand like that. It's wonderful. Lovely association with time. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Lovely Bye -bye. session. <laughs>